And my first guest this week in the new year is coming to us via satellite from Las Vegas, actually from their own facility in Las Vegas. Matthew Schisler is the CEO of Cord Blood America, the stock symbol CBAI. Matt, good to see you again. Hey, Don, thanks for having me back. Really appreciate it. Well, Matt, it's great to have you back. Now, of course, Cord Blood America, it's a company we've been following for a few years now. You describe yourself as focusing on the life-saving potential of stem cells by cryogenically storing umbilical cord blood. Do you mind giving us a general overview of the company and your technology? Yeah, sure, Don. Um, cord Blood America, as you mentioned, we cryogenically store umbilical cord blood stem cells for families. That means families pay us to store their stem cells. The cells are collected at the time of birth from the umbilical cord and they're a perfect match for the child. And those stem cells are used to battle diseases such as cancer and leukemia, uh, anemia and blood and immune disorders. So uh, that's what we do we've been, we've been doing this. Uh, it's funny because it's January 2011 and uh, we're, this is our eighth anniversary as an organization. So we're very happy to be here. Well, congratulations on that, uh, Matt. Now, you know, we've seen an amazing paradigm shift over the years in people's knowledge of and attitudes towards stem cell technology, because I guess it's safe to say the controversy has waned considerably. It really has. You know, even when we started eight years ago, Don, there was a lot of, you know, uh, you know a lot of misconception or, you know, un, un, you know, really not really good ideas to what stem cell technology is. And what stem cells are, there are really two types of stem cells. There's, there's hematopoietic and then there's uh, regenerative or mesicomal stem cells. And the and hematopoietic stem cells are found in the umbilical cord. And what they're used for is to uh, repopulate one's immune system. So if someone would go through a, uh, uh, you know, a, a treatment such as radiation or chemotherapy, you know, that, the, the, that type of treatment will really destroy the, the immune system and the body becomes weak. And so while they're going uh, through that for something such as cancer, by repopulating their system, the body can remain strong and they can continue the treatments to hopefully fully eradicate the disease. So, you know, the umbilical cord, bone marrow, and a couple other sources are hermatopoietic stem cells. And that's what we do. We store those stem cells. And they're, like I said, they're a perfect match for the child. Well, now, speaking of changes over the years, Matt, I mean, the domestic and international growth of Cord Blood America has been nothing less than fascinating to watch. Uh, why have you chosen this global strategy? Well, for a number of reasons. We, we really want to be, and I've said this in mul for multiple years now, the world's uh, largest, most dominant stem cell storage facility. And in order to do that, we need to have a few places around the globe that will be able to collect and store stem cells simply for logistics purposes. You know, shipping stem cells, although not incredibly difficult, is not incredibly easy as well. And so sometimes getting stem cells from halfway around the world uh, could be a little, you know, troublesome. So what we've decided, Don, is that to have a laboratory in, in Europe and to have a laboratory in South America and have a laboratory in Asia in order to, to process and store the stem cells there. And, you know, it was funny because this time last year, Don, we hadn't, we were still domestic. The only lab we had was right here in the United States. And in fact, we were having our grand opening in January of last year. And since then, in March of last year, we purchased 51% uh, controlling interest of Stellicure in Germany. And in um, September of last year, we purchased controlling interest in biocells in Argentina. And we also announced that we're opening a stem cell lab in Shenyang, China. And that is set to open uh, early this year. We've been under construction for the last few months. So, you know, we, we said that we wanted to grow go globally, and that's what we've done. Well, on the subject of international growth, you recently announced a letter of intent to acquire Mexico's largest stem cell storage facility, a deal the company says will put cord blood on a clear path to profitability. Tell us about that. Sure. So, Don, you followed us for six years now, so you know that we've gone from the small, fledgling company, and then we've continued to grow year after year, and we've grown through organic growth, acquisition, and diversification of revenue stream. And by using that model, we've inched closer and closer to profitability. But by having the ability to purchase the largest uh, stem cell storage facility in Mexico, this actually takes us up over the top and gets us to operate off our own cash flow. Now, we're still, you know, we're under LOI, so we're still in the due diligence phase right now, and that, that, that's hopefully set to close here sometime in the near future. But by doing so, that's a complete game changer for Cord Blood America because for the last six years of being a fully reporting OTCBB company, you know, we've raised money in order, in order to funnel, you know, push this growth forward for both organic growth and acquisition. And by getting over that hump and operating off our own cash flow, that completely changes how we structure the organization and how shareholders value the organization. And that's why an acquisition like Cryosol Mexico is extremely important to us. 
You know, Matt, there was a mention of a nuisance lawsuit surrounding this Cryocell Mexico deal. Uh, what can you say about it, and do you believe that more acquisitions like this are on the horizon in 2011? Yeah, I can't say a lot, Don, um, other than, you know, the, as what was mentioned in the press release, the Cryocell uh, International, which is headquartered in the United States, has sued us, and what we believe is to, to try to prohibit us from purchasing Cryocell Mexico, and we're very confident in our ability to, to see this to a favorable favorable conclusion. So we're looking forward to moving this forward. Do you expect more acquisition activity like this in the coming year? You know, I do. I do. Um, it, it, we've been highly acquisitive since 05. We've made five acquisitions since 05, and you know, we're not going to slow down. Um, I think we're going to be a little more choosy about our acquisitions as we go forward because we want to make sure they you know, cash flow uh, properly and into the organization. But yeah, I do see it going forward that way. Once again, Cord Blood America stock symbol CBAI. Uh, Matt, what do we now know about the longevity of stored samples? Sure. So the first stored sample was stored in 1989. Um, and so now this year it'll turn 22 years old. And as recently as last year, it was tested for cell viability and has a very good cell viability rate. So we know the oldest sample is 21 years old. If Dr. Jeffrey O'Neill or Dr. Shamoon Ahmad were in here in the seat right now, Don, they tell you that these samples would uh, they'll last a lifetime or decades. I'm, I'm going to tell you 21 years, but we do feel very confident that it's, you know, it's going to last at least a person's lifetime in storage. You know, Matt, you mentioned a lot of scientific breakthroughs using stem cells at the beginning of the interview. As more and more of those become known, it would seem to me that many more parents would opt for services like yours. Uh, how does the word get out? Well, you know, Don, has said for years, us and a number of our competitors in the industry, have all used the traditional means to get this, the word out to parents, whether it be through you know, advertisement in magazines or the internet or through information placed uh, in doctors' offices and hospitals. I mean, this is really the, the channel that everyone's used. What's make, what has made us different and continues to make us different here domestically is that we've partnered with insurance companies to provide information in their, in their uh, maternity packages. And, and so we've, we've had a number of relationships with Blue Cross Blue Shield and the for the last few years within, in certain cities and we keep expanding those relationships to new Blue Cross plans and just a couple months ago we signed an agreement with America's Health Insurance Partners to even expand relationships even further outside of the Blues plans. So, you know, our, our strategy, Don, is going to continue to partner with the insurance companies to disseminate the information through their maternity programs as well as through some strategic locations that they have around the country and get the information in the hands of the parents. You know, Matt, I know that you're a goal-oriented CEO. Uh, do you have a specific list of accomplishments you'd like to see happen in 2011? Uh, three things. And, and Don, every year we, we, we do this, and uh, I know you're familiar with it. We set up three goals, or what we call the three pillars of success this year. Uh, the first one is or, domestically is organic growth. And, you know, I say that every year, but we're going to be very focused on adding new uh, partners, whether it be insurance partners or corporate partners or even government partners. Uh, to grow organically here in the States. Um, and as far as internationally goes, the organic growth, it's different in each country, to be honest with you, how their business models operate, but each one of them are focused on organic growth goals for 2011. Secondly is diversification of revenue streams. Um, in 2010, we announced one revenue stream diversification that took hold, was, which was we were collecting placenta for research and development, and uh, that actually contributed to about 5% of our revenues in 2010. And we're going to look to continue to diversify revenue streams uh, simply because we believe that as a stem cell organization, we don't want to pin our hopes on one form of stem cells or another. We, you know, the cord blood business was the, the business that got us into this, and it's a tremendous business. But we want to make sure that we s stay forward thinking down the road that other forms of stem cells you know, may have some impact as well. And we're going to look to diversify and potentially collect, process, store, manipulate, whatever it may be, other forms of stem cells. Last but not least, our goal this year and for investors to look at is, you know, we really want to get running off our own cash flow this year. Uh, I've seen, every year, my goals have always been somewhere around organic growth, acquisition, and diversification of revenue streams. But this year, this year really is about getting to run off our own cash flow, whether it's through acquisition, through organic growth, uh, picking up another you know, ac acquisition similar to Cryosol Mexico, whatever it may be, that's the finite goal of this year is to get on the other side. We find we've, we've grown enough as an organization we believe that it's time to get up over that hump, start operating off our own cash, and really completely restructure the capitalization of the company to make a much stronger company for, for shareholders to look at. 
Well, now, Matt, for the first time, we brought our Money TV cameras into your brand new Las Vegas facility, your cryogenic storage facility. You got a pretty interesting backdrop there. What are we looking at? Uh, you're looking at uh, liquid nitrogen tanks, Don. As I turn to my side, there's about 25 tanks back there loaded with liquid nitrogen. Nice and chilly, about 100 minus 196 Fahrenheit in there. And, uh, and back in those uh, tanks are the stem cell samples that we store. So, you know, we pump in liquid nitrogen from outside the building and it runs through the vacuum piping and we fill the tanks every two to three days to make sure they stay cold. And uh, that's what you're looking at right now. Well, Matt, uh, why is this a good time right now for people to take a closer look at Core Blood America? Well, every year up until this point has been a you know growth curve, and we've had to finance the growth uh, through finan you know through capital and and whatever it may be, or whatever means it is taken to finance that growth. This year is we're probably on the precipice of the biggest growth year in history uh, for Cord Blood America. But in addition to that, we're very focused on the cash flow, getting operating off our own cash flow this year. So if there was ever a time that you believe that Cord Blood America was about to turn the corner, this would be the time. Accord Blood America, stock symbol CBAI. Matt, always a pleasure having you in the program. Thanks for joining us on our first show of the new year. Looking forward to more updates as we move along. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. Thanks, Don. Happy New Year.